For more on this now, we speak to Judge Johan Krichler, former Justice of the Constitutional Court. Thank you so much, Judge, for your time. I mean, the MK Party's argument, for example, when you go back to court, they were saying that it's not the IEC's role to enforce Section 47 of the Constitution. The IEC, of course, disagreeing with this. So now there's an appeal, of course, coming after the Electoral Commission, uh, the, the Electoral Court's uh, order. Now, how important would you say this particular move to appeal is looking at the fact that there's still a differing of opinion here. Ogiwe, one thing of which all South Africans can be justly proud is that we have had six successful, unqualifiedly successful, honest, free and fair elections in the new South Africa. For an emergent democracy, that is most, most, most unusual. For somebody now with this highly contentious election, highly contested election, to start by casting doubt on the integrity of the Electoral Commission is extremely unwise. There is no reason whatsoever to doubt the competence, the integrity, the impartiality of our Electoral Commission. I am proud of it. Every South Africa can be proud of it. It is the Electoral Commission's job to apply the law applicable to elections. It has to interpret that law. If it comes to a conclusion and the Electoral Court comes to a different conclusion and there is doubt about it, it is not the right it is the bounden duty of the Electoral Commission to have that doubt resolved before the election. There can be no suggestion of mixed feelings about its right and its duty to have this issue properly, authoritatively decided at the highest level. When you listen to... Uh, uh, the, mixed the, feelings are all very well. Yeah. But there are good feelings and there are bad feelings and there are malicious feelings. Good feelings say, let the Electoral Commission do its job, let the political parties do their job, and let the voters do their job. And, Judge Krakla, one thing, though, you know, that, that um, I've also heard um, being advanced by the former IECs, for example, Tere Tselani, who says that the IEC should not have only confined itself to Section 47, Subsection 1E, but should have sought the Apex Court to look at the entire Section 47 in order to ensure that they do pronounce on whether or not it has the right, um, you know, or even the powers to enforce the entire section. Your thoughts, should they have confined themselves to subsection 1E or should they have sought to look at the entire section 47? I will not second guess the Electoral Commission. It is its job to decide what it has to do. It is not my job. It is not any other clever lawyer's job to decide for the IEC how it has to do its job. Mm. There's also the issue um, when you think about the National Assembly, for example, um, which may be another hurdle um, as far as enforcement of Section 47 is concerned. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on this one. For example, what happens if the enforcement is then left to the National Assembly and some of the candidates then contest the elections only to be disqualified later? What does then happen to these votes? Okay, that is a a situation that can arise only once the Constitutional Court has made a particular decision. I am, as a former judge, not prepared to express any view mm. on the correctness or otherwise of the arguments that were presented to the Electoral Court. It is for the Constitutional Court to decide that, and it is for us, all of us, competitors, political parties, commentators, to keep quiet until the court has now finally decided. And as I certainly, as a judge, will not comment. 
And I suppose another issue that's going to be important also when it comes to this particular order is that the argument around the remission of sentence, for example, um, looking at whether or not, you know, does a, a, rem a remission of sentence then mean that the original sentence does not exist anymore, especially when you look at the former president, um, for example. So that's also another issue that's going to be quite important, not only for now, though, but also for future elections, I suppose. That's precisely why it should be determined by the Constitutional Court. Now, I presume that that is one of the issues that the Electoral Commission is taking on appeal to the Constitutional Court so that we know for the future whether this contention is valid or not. All this at the same time is being done without reasons by the Electoral Court. Does this have any impact at all on the proceedings in your view? Sorry, I didn't hear that, Bongi. Um, all of this is happening, for example, in, in the absence of reasons by the Electoral Court. Does this have any impact on the case before the Constitutional Court at, at all? Uh, uh, it's not unusual in, in urgent cases for courts to give their decision quickly and to then formulate elegantly their reasons. In this particular instance, I don't think anybody can fault the court for having done so. And it does make it get a little more difficult for the Electoral Commission to formulate its notice of appeal, but no doubt it cannot amend it once it's seen the reasons. There's no earthly reason why the can't, case can't proceed uh, ordinarily as a matter of urgency and for the Constitutional Court to decide whether it will accept the case or not. I know you touched on this a little bit um, at the beginning when we started our conversation, but there is this view um, that the IEC is playing politics and you're saying that it's got every right to then, uh, you know, head to the courts for clarity and for certainty. But there are some that I've interviewed as well who are saying that uh, they're descending into the realm of politics, despite them saying that they seemingly they're not doing that. In fact, they just want clarity for the future and certainty. Bongiwe, somebody who says that the IEC is descending into politics when it interprets the law relating to its mandate is either ill-informed or malicious, but most certainly wrong. And what happens then, um, because now you, you think about the calls for the commissioner, um, the IEC commissioner's Janet Love to um, resign. That's uh, the MK party that's calling for her to resign. But at the same time in court, they were also accusing her of being biased and saying that she should have recused herself because of the remarks that she would have made at a press briefing with journalists earlier on in the year, and they say that she should not have also presided over this matter. How important is it then that the apex court also pronounces on this matter, especially when you look at the work of the IEC and its credibility ahead of the elections? I'm not sure. I really don't know whether the issue of Janet Love's uh, recusal or bias, alleged, uh, imagined, fabricated or not, is before the Constitutional Court. Let me say for myself and for any electoral administrator, if you are asked as a commissioner what your view is on the law by journalists, by political parties, by other interested parties, it is not only your right, it is your duty to communicate your view to that particular questioner. That Janet Love did so at a time when she was asked about it is certainly no basis whatsoever to criticise her or to suggest that she should withdraw from the commissioner or resign. I may just say that this is a standard tactic of diversionary dishonesty in the case of persons who are expressing views unpopular to certain people. Instead of confronting the merits of the appeal, you attack the integrity of the person who is, is expressing the opinion. That kind of tactic does not belong in a democracy. 
All right, so Judge, do appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, that is uh, Judge Johan Grichler, former Justice of the Constitutional Court. And this matter, of course, drawing uh, a difference in opinion. And uh, I suppose it's going to be important for certainty um, for the future as well. And uh, let's see then how this uh, particular story develops. We'll keep you abreast of the developments here. The IEC, of course, uh, now launching an urgent um, appeal of that judgment by the Electoral Court.